based at Nui Dat, there's a little hill, which is what Nui Dat means, little hill. Uh, and there were the Nui Tai Vais, which was a set of hills out to the uh, west of us. Uh, the Long High Hills were on a, uh, down to the south of the base and Zwan Mok in the area out to the east. The Nui Tai Vais uh, uh, were quite substantial hills, I don't know, two and a half thousand foot high, I guess, just peaks, volcanic sort of peaks. And uh, there'd been several operations up there. And one of the last operations that we did up there was uh, they decided to put some, I, I'm fairly sure it was a four hour uh, op, uh, put, put a, uh, a company group in a pads on the top of it and, and just search down. And uh, trouble was the pad at the top was pretty much a, a two aircraft pad. So you, there, was, there was a few hazards associated with it, but we all, we all got up there and we put the first lot in and we went back down. It was only a oh, six or seven minute flight from Nui Dat to the top of the mountain and four or five minutes on the way down because you're coming downhill. Uh, so we, we did the first lift with, uh, it might have been six aircraft, we two, 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 so we got as many troops on the ground as we could. And then we went down, we got another lot. And uh, we, as we finished the final insert, there were four aircraft, the, the two last pairs. And we came off the top of the hill. And uh, I don't know how much you know about the Iroquois, but um, we used to do our power settings uh, in pounds of torque. And if you started the descent, at about 70 knots and about 18 to 20 pounds of torque, you've got the ultimate walk. That, that thump of the Iroquois really was magnified. So four of our aircraft to get us so that we could land back on Nui Dat together from the top of the hill was a 16 to 18 PSI descent at about 70 knots and, and there's all four aircraft coming down. And I mean, we were thumping the air, something fierce. And uh, down in the paddy fields, down at the on on at sea level, you could see him. There is a, uh, a Vietnamese farmer ploughing his paddy field behind his buffalo, two water buffalo. And uh, one of the or both of the buffalo took objection to this beating thumping sound, so they started to run. And you could see it quite clearly, this poor little guy, I was sitting on the left side, and the co-pilot of Zero One had just handed over to his, his captain to fly, and he hadn't turned off his rotary selector switch from UHF intercom, uh, uh, into aircraft frequency to intercom to talk. So when he pressed his button to talk to his skipper, he actually broadcast on the UHF frequency. And this voice said, which is the effect, look at that poor bastard down there getting water skiing behind his, his buffalo. And being the kind hearted person I was, I thought, oh, of course, this is one of my mates. So I flicked across to UHF and said, long ranging, which means you're broadcasting. And I thought, that'll, that'll stop him. But no, the instant response is, did you hear that? Some stupid idiot is, broad, is long ranging. <laughs> it's you, deathly hush land into the crew room wouldn't look at anyone <laughs> you you get things wrong from time to time and and uh we used to look for for funny things you know uh, having a bad night <clears throat> an over speed as we would call it um and uh you you get up fly up to, to Nui Dat and you wouldn't feel well and you'd pray that nothing would happen in the war. We had a ready room there and we had blankets and, and pillows and you, on occasions you'd come in and there'd be eight pilots and eight crewmen and gunners all sprawled out because there'd been a big night and yeah, it's good that nothing happened in the war on those days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was a um, I guess my overriding thought, which I took into my later career, was that uh, the, the grunt, the digger on the ground, was the most important person. You, what you did, you had to do, you did whatever you had to do for him. 